glad you're here to quilt with Marcy Baker. With simpler methods, we're gonna enjoy our quilting even more. Today we're gonna be doing knots, and I'm gonna show you five different knots that I found helpful for my sewing and quilting. The beginner knot, everyone learns usually right away. And then the quilting knot is used whenever we're hand quilting. We're gonna do a basting knot, and that's gonna hold some layers together temporarily. Then we're gonna be doing the tailor's knot, which is great for applique, and I use it for my binding. And then there is the surgeon's knot, which is great for tying quilts. Let's look at these knots and make a sample. I'm gonna show you that and let's get going. To get the most out of this video, as I work through it, go ahead and make some sample knots. And the sampler that you can make is two layers of cotton fabric with batting in between. And that's gonna give you something where you can practice each knot as we go. Go ahead and get that together and let's get into these knots. You'll see me work through the samples using pearl cotton, a large needle, and knit cotton fabric. That's gonna make it easier for you to see the detail. The first knot is a beginner knot. It's what everyone learns from the very beginning when their grandmother hands them a needle and thread. And they may take and lick their finger, but basically they take the, the thread, roll it around their finger, and then they just twist that and pull and they get a big honking knot. I just pulled it out except for that little bit. And if you need a bigger knot, you do it again. And it just becomes this big wad of, of um, thread. This is great for lots of things because it just holds right there where you need it to be. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull it through here and I'm gonna show you how I use this knot for uh, whenever I'm doing stacked repeats, uh, which Sarah and I have a book called Stack and Cut and we've got that pulled so it's not coming through those layers. And I wanna hold these layers together tight, as in this example here, where I have, uh, this is six layers of fabric, where I have matched up exactly that point all the way through. I've got the knot on the back, but now I need a knot on the front and holding all six layers together. Okay, so I need to do that. And how am I gonna get that to be a tight knot? I'm going to take and I'm going to uh, make a loop and pull the needle through. And as I do that, I'm gonna hold this down tight against the fabric. You can see how that knots right there against the fabric. And I just hold that and pull it through. Don't let that loop slide out from underneath there. Okay, I got one, but I wanna make sure it's extra tight. So I'm gonna do that again. And this time the loop needs to be under the first knot. And if I hold it there, then I can get that to pull tight. And now I have an extra knot. And if you wanna do a second or third, just to make sure that you've got it super tight, cause you don't want these layers to shift and then you're designed to not match where you expect it to be. It's gotta be tight. So that's how I use the beginner's knot and use it to an advantage in the stack and cut designs. So with the beginner's knot, it was kind of bulky and kind of obnoxious. For quilting, whenever we're hand quilting, we need to be very specific size so we can pop it through that first layer of fabric. We're gonna take the tip of the needle, hold the thread here in between your fingers, take the end of your thread and lay it across the top of your needle. Then take this loop right there by the end and wrap it around the needle three or four times and then pinch that, the wrapping between your two fingers, thumb and forefinger, and we're gonna pull through and you may need to loosen up a little bit to get that to come through. And you're gonna pull this through, and what we're gonna get is a very nice, even knot where we had two or three loops going around the thread. And that right there is gonna give me a knot that'll pull through the top layer and then kind of bury down into the batting. And now we're gonna do a basting knot, which is really not a knot. <laughs> it's going to be, it's gonna hold the three layers together like knots tend to do. And I'm just gonna take a stitch I use this whenever I'm basting. Um, yep. Whenever I'm basting a quilt. And I will take and lay, hold those layers together, get that thread held in place. And bear with me with this cotton knit and pearl cotton. Okay, so I've got two stitches. I usually take three, and they're just all going every which way. And 
and it's holding the three layers together, but it's not a knot. It's just going to hold them, which is what I need. So that's the basting knot. So here is our tailor's knot, and it's my favorite. Uh, I learned it from my applique teacher, and it's great because it ties the thread into the fabric, and then uh, it's so small because it's, it's just tied in, and I really like it. I use it for my binding and for uh, most any of my uh, quilting or sewing. The way you do this to, uh, knot is to, um, we're going to take a stitch, and it's only catching a couple of threads, just really small. And leave about a one inch tail, and then take another stitch right above it, same number of threads, just like right above it. Okay, and don't pull it tight. We have a loop there. And now I have, as I lay my thread out, I'm going to make a larger circle or loop. And I'm going to take my needle. It's going to go into the small loop and out the larger loop. And as I pull that up, you're going to see a figure eight show up. As I pull that thread, you can see the figure eight. That's what I want to see. And we're going to pull that down tight. And now I have my thread tied into my fabric, and it's not going to come out. That's called the tailor's knot, and it's just so fine. That's what's neat about it is you can hide it wherever you need it to be, and it's tied in. So that's my favorite. Let's look at the surgeon's knot. That's our last one. The surgeon's knot is used for a very specific point, and that's when we're layering and tying a quilt together. So we have our quilt layers, and instead of doing hand quilting, we're going to tie using our pearl cotton or embroidery floss or a ribbon. We're going to tie the layers together, and that's the amount of quilting. I use it whenever I'm teaching children how to make their first quilt, and they can tie it, and that's a lot easier for them to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our pearl cotton or our thread. Actually, it's not going to be thread. It's going to be a yarn or something like that for tying. And we're going to take a, I don't know, quarter inch stitch through all three layers. You want to have it bigger than what we did in the tailor's knot because you want to hold the layers together and you don't want the fabric to tear as it gets uh, worn. And we're going to take, if I were doing a lot of tying on this, I would take a longer thread and I would take a bunch of stitches strategically placed around the quilt top. Um, but I'm just going to show you this one knot and we're going to have a piece that's about three or four inches on either side. And now we're going to tie it. And if you know what a square knot is or learn this in um, 4-H or Girl Scouts uh, scouting, that it would be left over right and then right over left, we're going to do the same thing, except on the second half of it, we're going to do an extra over. And what I mean by that is we're going to take um, right over left. So we take our right piece and put it over the left. and go over, okay? And now we're gonna do left over right to make that square knot. So we're gonna have this and we're gonna go left over right. And we got the over, but we're gonna do another over. So it's another twist through that knot. So you can see here how we have these intertwining and we've got an extra twist in that one. And what we'll do is we'll tighten this bottom one down. I'm just showing, I mean, I usually tighten that one first, but I want you to see all the stitch. And then we're going to, don't tighten it too much. You don't want to draw it up. You just want it flat. And then we're going to pull this one tight. And that's going to hold those layers together. That's not going to come undone because we did the square knot. And um, anyway, it's just, it holds it together and you don't have things going, coming undone. If you do left over left, or left over right and left over right, then you don't get a square knot and things are going to slip off. So that's our, our um, surgeon's knot, and that's used for tying quilts together. So aren't those knots interesting and useful in many ways? I hope you made your samples and you can try it out on your next project. My favorite was the tailor's knot, which I use in my um, if I'm doing applique and then especially with binding. And then you have your basting knot, which is great uh, for when you're basting a quilt, holding layers together. And the beginner's knot, useful in lots of different ways. The quilter's knot, definitely for hand quilting. And then the surgeon's knot for tying your quilts. I hope you've enjoyed learning this. Thanks for stopping by to Quilt with Marcy Baker. Enjoy your quilting even more.